or whatever you do and put to kick in about seven metres and stands there and waits for the other team to pick it up so that they get the penalty. And on the way home, you were you were sort of saying that was a bit of a rubbish kick off. You were telling yeah, me. I said, I said on the whole, you know, your kicking was really much better this week. You know, now Joshua, you've really tried hard, but you know, what was that kick off? You said it was planned. I told Theo, don't touch the ball, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's that sort of craftiness. You know, Sean Wayne can do a brain deal with brains like that in his backroom staff. So, uh, <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. But great stuff, um, you know. And I'm sure the stories like that from across the community game from from the weekend. And it, you know, it is a it is a positive to see the kids getting getting back out there and getting the the game back underway. And hopefully, during this shitty time that we've been through, we haven't lost too many young players who've got out of the habit, or the ones that have will see their friends having a great time uh, back yeah. playing and, and be inspired themselves to get back involved. Yeah, and, you know, if anyone listening has got kids in Hull who are year seven, then um, Mighton could really do with another couple of players. We lost a couple. Um, Alicia's had to leave the team um, because girls aren't allowed to play with boys anymore. So, um, yeah, another couple of players would be really, really good. Yeah, and I'm and to be honest, I'm sure those those calls will come out from people in yeah. towns and cities across uh, across the country. So you know, if if you've got any kids who are braver than we are, uh, who want to get stuck into some contact rugby league, then um, then find your local club and uh, and then we'll yeah. have more great stories to share, which is fantastic. And the other thing, Joshua made three tackles, which is three more than normal. So you know, that's a massive step forward. Yep. Well, you see, now you've got like a bit of a shit house grubby halfback who actually likes tackling, as opposed to a nugget slot halfback who doesn't like tackling. He's going to get more inspiration for that side of the game, isn't he? Yeah, something <laughs> like that. I think his confidence is just growing a little bit. Yeah, good lad. Excellent stuff. Um, He's so, still uh, half of all of his teammates. Yeah, have they all got fancy new haircuts as well and new nicknames? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. But um, they, they've got they've moved up to the next size kit, and they were told get in line from tallest to shortest, so that you know we can um, give you the right size kit. Joshua barely comes up to the shoulder on some of his teammates. <laughs> well, he can just it can just be like a nugget little Mason Lino type thing, can't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent stuff right okay um that is other results we're now going to make our predictions for the next week in rugby league (laughs) predictions time round five of super league and we start with the uh, slp derby for us two sarah um 7 45 p.m kickoff on Sky in front of the cameras, Wigan versus Hull FC. Uh, I'm going to let you have first go, tipping your team, and then I'll have second go, tipping my team, I think. But what do you reckon will happen and and how do you think it will come about? Um, I think Mark Sneed's leg will get better and he'll drop a girl to win it. So uh, FC by one then. Yeah. I'm going to go Wigan by eight. I think um, I'm... Now that we've got French back into the side, I'm sure he'll play on the wing back in this game, but it gives us that extra bit of, of class in attack, um, you know, an extra weapon. So I think we will be able to find s- some points um, and both teams have got strong defences. It'll be a tight game. Uh, Wigan by eight, though, I think. Okay. Friday, six o'clock, Wakefield versus Catalans. What do you think from this one, Sarah? Um, I think that Catalans will be too strong for Wakefield. Um, Catalans by 12, I'm going to go. Yeah, and, you know, Wakefield made me think, should I should I give him some credit for that performance last week in terms of can they, at home against a team that don't really like playing at Bellevue, I, I think, over the years, traditionally Catalans. Does but, anyone like playing at Bellevue? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that goes for some of the home players as well. But <laughs> I, Bill Tupu might be back for Wakefield, but other people now are going to be out. So, you know, who's going to partner 
um, Lino in the halves because the best will in the world, Westerman, is a you know he's the last of a dying breed of, of ball playing loose forwards, but he ain't ball playing enough to be in the halfbacks. I think no. you lose that element of oh shit he passed it um, that you get from him at, at at thirteen. So I I just think Catalans will bounce back. So Catalans by ten. Yeah. The other six o'clock Friday kick off kick off is Lee versus Saint Helens. So uh, how many do you think Lee are gonna win by? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Saints by how many? Twenty for me. Do you know I was actually going to say twenty as well. There you go then. What I think what we need to talk about in terms of Saints is will they click into higher than second or third gear? Um, you know, and and they probably won't need to will they to win that game? So we're, we're still no. we still don't quite know everything about Saint Helens. Uh, yeah, maybe in the cup the weekend after that might be where they start to start to get tested this year um friday 7 45 p.m the second televised game this week second and last televised game this week is salford hosting castleford salford will be buoyed by their first super league win of the season but will that be enough against a strong cast side for you sarah um no i don't think so and to be honest i i think i'd go castleford by 16. <laughs> I've written cast by 16 as well. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I think Salford will be easier to score on than Castleford will be, and that's why it'll go that way, basically. Um, but I do think Salford will have the chances in this game. I don't think it'll be all one way. Um, Saturday, 1 pm kickoff. Warrington Ooh. versus. Hull Kingston Rovers, will the Robins' strong form continue or will the wire bounce back? Um, I think given that Warrington have actually got a seven-day turnaround now, I think that'll um, give them time to regroup after, you know, the tough draw against us and then the loss against Catalans. So I'm going to go um, Warrington by 12. <laughs> You haven't, have you? Genuinely, guys, we don't talk about this before um, before we do the the predictions on the recording. I've written down wire by 12. <laughs> so not only have we predicted the same winner for the last four matches we've discussed, we've predicted the same margin in, in three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can change that in the final game of the weekend, Sunday at 3pm. Maybe the most intriguing game of the weekend other than the Wigan Hull game, Sarah. Huddersfield versus Leeds. Who's going to who's gonna get out of this rut? Well, so this week is obviously Josh Jones' week not to play. Ah. Um, but then Leeds just, oh. I'm going to go Leeds by four. Well, we got we went different on the first game. We're going different on the last game. I was I'm buoyed by Huddersfield's sort of fitness and endurance in that game against St Helens. And Leeds are not in the same category as St Helens uh, in terms of quality. If I'm not sure about what the status of Luke Gale is, but I'm guessing he won't be playing. So I, I just think um, they're back to a position of no match fit halfbacks maybe Eastman might be match fit by now having played two games um, but I don't think he can do it all by himself so that's a problem for, for Leeds um, Zaney Winehouse isn't going to be back yet is he? he's serving the last game of his ban I think so uh, and Hud- yeah, Huddersfield are, you know the the Cogger and Caesar things getting a bit of time together now Um They look so much better for me when Adam O'Brien's on the pitch over James Cunningham. So hopefully O'Brien's no no shave no no scrape from the head knock he got last week. I'm going Huddersfield by twelve. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised if Leeds won by four or more either. It it's it's it's, it is one of those that I don't think. I think that this one that one is a really hard one to call because they can both be as bad as each other. Yeah, and I think if we could pay for one-off games that we're not season ticket holders for for Super League like we can for the Championship 
I'd probably have paid for this one to watch it on our league because um, I am intrigued by what happens. Uh, championship game of the week should have been Toulouse versus Featherstone. We'll go for two of the sides um, that are below them in the table. Sheffield versus London because I'm, I'm not sure which way that'll go if, if I'm completely honest with Sheffield being a little bit up and down but starting the season pretty well overall um, and and the Broncos seeming to get their shit back together last week we'll, we'll see how that one goes women's Super League game of the week was also a tough call this week because we haven't quite got to the heavyweights playing against each other yet Sarah so yeah Instead, we've picked out a, a local derby. And actually, what I should have done is checked which game's going to be the Twitch game. So I'm just going to do that now um, and look for Women's Super League fixtures. Oh, Featherston versus Leeds is a Twitch game. So I'm going to switch up from Wakefield versus Castleford to say our Women's Game of the Week. No, we'll, we'll keep it Wakefield as Castleford as a local derby for game of the week but we'll also put up on the form the Featherstone versus Leeds game for people who watch that one on Twitch uh, yeah. that's at 12 o'clock on Sunday is Fev Leeds Wakey against Cass will be following that game at 3 o'clock um, NRL Brit picks the Raiders versus the Rabbitohs Thursday at 10.50am you never know this could be another high scorer um, <laughs> The, yeah. the Broncos versus the Titans Friday at 10.55am so let's see how Herbie gets on in the Queensland Derby Bulldogs versus the Eels Saturday 8.30am see if Thompson can uh, keep his strong start to the season going after he's finally got over his ban uh, Knights versus Roosters Saturday 10.35am you never know Dom Young might play for the Knights but Whatever happens, make sure you get your fan views in for us. Look out for the links to um, to all of the games on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, if a game that you've watched has, uh, or or a game that you know your kids have played in or something like that as well, isn't on the form itself, you can pick other and tell us about that game. Uh, you know, across the championship, across the women's Super League as well. Um, and uh, make sure you get your fan views in for us to talk about next week. Definitely, yeah. I think that's uh, that's most things covered. All that's left for us to do is wrap up the show, and I'm quite intrigued to learn about what this quiz is going to be, so let's find out. <laughs> Right, okay, so this week's quiz, um, I was chatting yesterday to the kids and saying that I was doing the quiz and I thought I'd come up with an idea and um, my idea was because this is our best season since, best start to the season since 2009, I was going to do a 2009 themed quiz and Luke said to me, I'll write you a quiz. I was like, yeah, whatever, Luke. It's it's meant to be like linked to rugby um, and he's like, no, no, I've got a really good idea. Let's call it Pie or Guy. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, and anyway, so he's gone away and he's researched. Um, and the the amusing thing is he didn't realise that Wigan's nickname was the Pie Eaters. So this is like <laughs> even better. So I'm going to give you three, three pairs um, of names and one of them is a pie, and one of them is a guy, a nickname for a Wigan player. Okay? So one of them is the name of a pie. Yeah. And one of them is a nickname for a player. Yes. And I have to pick the nickname for the player. You've got to tell me which one's the pie and which one's the guy. This is fantastic. I'm on Isn't board. Isn't it? Yes. This is why I've been so excited about it. <laughs> so your first choice is... Ruby or Pearl? Right, okay. So Pearl would be Steve Renoff. So that would be the the guy, yeah. I guess. And so by process of elimination, Ruby would be the pie. Is that some curry-flavoured pie, maybe? 
He he couldn't tell me what type of pie it was, but these okay. were all from a, uh, an accredited.